and welcome to the channel. My name is Adrian and I'm a miniature painter and sculptor from France. It's been a while. Yep, it's been a while since I've uploaded anything on this channel apart from a few shorts. Thanks to everyone still subscribed. And yep, let's revive this long dead channel. In today's video, I'll show you how I've painted a Magus from Games Workshop. Very nice miniature uh, coming from their Genestella cult army. Um, beautiful mini, I mean, uh, simple yet very effective in its design. In my opinion, it's a very good balance between larger surfaces and, you know, just the good amount of details. A little forward. Um, don't get distracted by uh, some of the French labels you may see on some of my uh, paint bottles. Here we have a specific distributor for some of the Vallejo products. Uh, their name is Prince August, so yeah, just a little explanation. Prince August Classic and Vallejo Model Color are the same product inside. I mean, it's the same paint. Uh, their names are not 100% transparent. I mean, you can't just translate their names. Uh, for example, a neutral gray uh, in Vallejo Model Color will be gray first empire in French. But good news, their reference numbers are a perfect match. So you have the numbers, you're good to go. Also, I try to show you most of my process, but I can't show, you know, everything, every little uh, adjustment, every little tinkering with stuff. So yeah, I choose to show the most relevant parts and uh, that's it. So yeah, without further ado, let's paint. The first step is, of course, to prime the mini. Here I'm using some black primer from Vallejo from their Mecha range. I really enjoyed it because it gives a very nice and smooth surface. Here I'm adding some grey primer in the black, just to create a nice and smooth gradation. By adding more grey, I'm just finishing this effect. Now onto the base coats. Here for the flesh I'm using a mix of tan earth and red. Just something very basic here. I'm um, just putting three, four layers just to have a nice smooth surface. By adding some red on the fabric, I'm just basing it. The same process three, four layers just to reach a nice and good coverage. Now I'm using some dark sea blue to base what will going to be um, some kind of a greenish fabric. Using a mix of red beige and black, I'm painting the warm black for the pants. I'm also painting the sleeves and the corset. Try to avoid the deepest recesses to keep the black here. I'm also sketching the staff and the back of this color piece. Here is the result after three, four layers. Using a mix of black and dark sea blue, I'm painting the base for the boots. Very simple step, three, four layers. Using some dark gray, I paint this uh, big color piece. I'm also sketching uh, some parts for a future animal. Using some black from the air range, I'm painting every little detail. This makes the mini a little more readable. 
Using tan earth, I begin the work on the skin tones. Just don't pay any attention to the blending, it's not very important. Try to just block the most important areas of light. In this tan earth I add some basic skin tone and a little bit of emerald green, just to not have too much saturation. I'm just blocking some areas, not thinking too much about blending. Using only a basic skin tone and a little bit of emerald green, I'm finishing blocking my lights. Here I'm using an airbrush just to work a little quicker. And here is the result. Using some red with a lot of water in it, so with a glaze consistency, I'm bringing some life in this quite dull uh, skin tone so far by putting some red under the cheeks, under the cheekbone just on the lips a little bit, under the nose maybe, on the knuckles and also on the insertion of the deltoid muscle. Using some burnt amber with a lot of water in it, I'm working on the shadows. Here is my palette so far. Using some dark sea blue and a little bit of my lightest uh, skin tone, I'm working on the veins on the side of the head. And using some carmine red and some black, I'm creating a warm shadow for the lips. Using some green gray, I work on the teeth. And also I sketch the eyes by putting a little dot on each corner of each eye. And I finish this step by correcting these dark parts meant to represent the iris and pupil with some black. With some white, I'm painting a little dot in each eye, just to have this little spark of life. Now onto the red fabric. Using some carmine red, I start the work here on the chest. and also the hips. Thighs. And of course, the back of the mini. You can see that this color doesn't have a strong coverage. Now using some cadmium vermillon and some bronze flesh, I push a little further my highlights. This particular mix is quite interesting because it has a stronger coverage. So I can sketch my highlights a little more precisely.
Now I'm using a glaze made with some cadmium vermilion and a lot of water just to smooth everything up before reworking a little bit on the highlights. And here is the result. Using a mix of red and dark sea blue, I'm creating a wash to increase the depth of the shadows. Layers after layers, I'm increasing the contrast. And here is the result. Now onto the red fabric. Using a mix of dark sea blue and emerald green, I put the first highlight on this part. Here is the result. Using a mix of uh, bronze flesh and emerald green, I'm adding another step of highlights here. Using some black, I'm here just working on some of the darkest parts in the deepest recesses. Now I'm adding some basic skin tone in my warm black mix. Just work a little bit on the pants. Try to sketch some light reflections here and there. Now I increase the contrast using a little more of my basic skin tone in the mix. Try to refine my sketches. Using some black with a lot of water in it and just refining the shadows. And here is the result so far. Onto the boots now. Using some dark sea blue, I'm sketching the first highlights. This particular boot is meant to be very reflective. Now in that dark sea blue, I'm adding a little bit of basic skin tone, as you can see here on my palette. And using this mix, I work a little more on these highlights. I'm focusing more on the shining aspect than just the highlights. Now I add 
a bit more of this basic skin tone in the mix just to increase the contrast even more. Finally, using a mix of white and basic skin tone, I'm adding the last specks of light. Now, with a wash made with just heavily diluted black, I'm reviving the shadows. And here is the result so far. Using German camouflage black brown and dark grey, I begin to work on this color part. It's meant to be a very reflective surface, like a highly polished steel. And now, using some neutral grey, I'm sketching the highlights. You can see that the further I go, the more diluted my paint is. It's because I kept some water in the belly of the brush. Using some sky gray, I push the contrast even more. And just uh, like with the neutral grey, I'm refining the highlights here with the sky grey. Using what I already have on my palette, I'm creating a reflection of the skin tone in this highly reflective surface. Now with a mix of German camouflage black brown and some black, I'm refining or increasing the shadows or dark reflections. The overall surface was lacking something, so I add a little bit of light to improve the overall aspect. So here is the result. After some refinements, this is what I ended up with. Using some black red, I'm painting the base coat for the golden parts. Using flat earth, I'm adding the first highlights. Don't hesitate to be rather opaque because it's quite important for the effect to work to have some strong foundations. And here is the result. I use some English uniform for the next step. As always, don't hesitate to be quite opaque. Um, also, don't hesitate to be quite sketchy. Everything can be refined later.
the end of this step, here's what I have. Using a mix of buff and English uniform, I'm pushing the contrast toward the light. Don't hesitate here also to be very opaque. It's important to create this metallic aspect. And here using this uh, light color, I'm sketching a little reflection here. And here is the result. And now, using this color, buff, I'm highlighting even more. Here's what I got so far. Now, using ice yellow, I'm adding more contrast. Now the effect is really building up. And the last step for now, I'm using ivory as a final highlight. Now the effect is almost finished. With some styrene and putty, I created this base. Using light flesh, I'm adding some touch-ups on the skin. It's important to notice that no step is set in stone. Everything can be modified or corrected after the final assembly. And now using clear orange and a lot of water, I'm glazing some parts of these golden surfaces. Now using a lot of white and a little bit of emerald green, I'm just correcting a little bit of these highlights here to help to guide the eye of the viewer and to frame the head. With a mix of red and black and a lot of water, I'm pushing the shadows a little further and also I'm adding some nuances, some hues on this boot. Now with some black and dark sea blue, I'm working a little more on the nuances of the warm black. Okay, 
the mini is finished, yay! Uh, just a little thing to uh, to add uh, off screen. I dug into my uh, own little uh, stash of plinth and uh, find a nice and suitable one and put the mini on top of it. And that's it, finished. So before the grand reveal, a quick word. Uh, if you enjoyed what you saw, if you learned something, uh, please share and like this video. Uh, you can, of course, comment. Uh, it's always of a great help for the algorithm. And if you disliked it, uh, share it with your enemies. Uh, and uh, yeah, maybe subscribe to the channel. Anyway, I hope to catch you on the next one. I'm leaving you now with the last shots of this uh, fun project. And uh, yeah, in the meantime, take care of yourself. Uh, stay hydrated. Mm, lift some weights. Anyway, stay strong. Have fun. Bye.